Hello and welcome to Clipping In. Monday the 8th of April and today we're going to do a circuit of the Wakefield Wheel because that's how we roll here. Lazinger Sports Club, turning right and beginning the Wakefield Wheel. But all right. So the Wakefield wheel, I'd never heard of it until I posted it right mid-January uh, when I went out to Stanley Ferry, <laughs> yes, that one. And somebody said in the comments, oh, you should do the Wakefield wheel. You've already done a lot of it. So I went online, found a couple of online references and a map and a route guide. And I realised that it's, it's, one says 36 miles, another one says 38 miles, a circuit of Wakefield. But I only know about two or three miles of it. So I thought it'd be interesting to come out and do this loop. The, uh, the road itself is pretty well marked. There are lots of little blue sign posts and stickers placed wherever possible and so it's it's possible I think to do it on site I started the route roughly uh, at Holbury and I wasn't really sure what to expect from this kind of a route it's very well planned there's been some good route planning and just lots of local knowledge have gone into it, I think. The way it flicks around on minor roads and then what you might call access routes at the side of railways, parks, towpaths. This section, half a mile, not very impressive. It's just because we're caught in the web of Wakefield here. It doesn't last long. Turning left at that roundabout where it says Pugney's Country Park. Not Pugsley. Yeah, so I'm just passing the entrance to the Durka Devils Junior Football Club. Steep pull on tarmac. Oh, <laughs> approaching five miles ridden and it, it starts to get a lot greener. Uh, it's much more pleasant riding for the next few miles an old railway bed I'll be dropping onto I'm uh, between New Miller Dam and old Royston Thank you! Ah. Shared use tracks 
doesn't do to go hammering through. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that you could do this route on site. What I did, I wrecked it, full disclosure, I wrecked it last Tuesday, 2nd of April. Because I thought the route finding might be a little bit tricky in places. And I set off with fairly moderate expectations, didn't really know what to think, but I would say beyond about five or six miles where I am now, it really opens out nicely. And the second and third quarters of the Wakefield wheel, which we're saying is about 36, 38 miles, are really good, lots of green space, very clever route planning, traffic calmed, superb stuff. I've just come through Old Royston, which is a regular on the road rides on clipping in, and now turning down here, uh, that slimy old Wickfield Barnsley Canal and whoa, that looks narrow. <laughs> yeah, there's an example of modern handlebars do not fit. Well, alongside the canal, this is one of the muddiest, wettest sections of the route, I think. Although keep in mind that it might be 8th of April, but we're still having named storms and torrential rain and flood warnings been a strange one. I'm around nine miles into it and it's, uh, I just tilt you that way, you can see it's beautiful woodland reservoir country. Just pleasant pedalling. Nice signage, straight ahead. Right turn. There's so much variety in the surfaces. After the, the woodland section with the mud, I'm on a really broken up bit of tarmac and then at this gate in front I'll be turning left into uh, I'm not sure what to call it but like an anglers park so we've got this country park anglers park bird sanctuary you can see lots of people like to come out strolling it's just a really nice leisure spot left turn here Oh, nope. Yep. Well, the recce on what I'll call Easter Tuesday it was packed on here. I had to just. Uh, it on at three four miles an hour as I say it's the it's only fair when it's a shared use area this section around the lake is probably the most prolonged waterlogged and muddy section of the entire route I think and the the mud dries like cement <laughs> It took me ages last week to get my bike clean. Ah. Cheeky left turn. Oh, hey. Yep. Right. Running through a puddle. <laughs> you meet a big stone. Oh. Yeah. I don't, no, I'm not jumping over it. <laughs> Some would, but not me. No, I don't know. I can't lift this bloody thing. Oh, it's got a motor in, hasn't it? What does that weigh? 
back 23 and the terrain continues to change clay mud heading to that track just ahead the uh, return of the Jedi section this is a lovely section of woodland I'm heading roughly for Nostal Priory bit of a climb so Nostal Priory is about a mile to the right but this wonderful byway is the Wakefield Wheel continuation I've well, passed through Charleston and I'm heading roughly in the direction of Normanton on another one of these really nice little linking tracks long distance view there towards my old friend Emily Moore Mast and the Pennines direction come from a nice little track running parallel with what I think is the Normanton Bypass But again it's all traffic free lovely stuff good planning on the outskirts of Normanton now on your toes here this is the centre of Normanton after a little bit of navigation around Altofs I'm heading for the Aaron Calder navigation Called the navigation. Some big barges there. Got a nice smooth flat couple of miles to Stanley Ferry. If you look at the, uh, the Strava map of the route, there's an odd little spike from Stanley Ferry. It sort of heads along one side of the towpath for nearly a mile, crosses at a bridge, and then goes up the other side for a mile only to bring you back more or less where you started at Stanley Ferry again I don't know why why that's been added in or what it achieves but put it in the bank anyway so this is now Stanley Village as opposed to Stanley Ferry and there's a, a cute little left turn coming up that follows what looks like some old watercourse or culvert and once more keeps you away from traffic left here this section I'm into the final third of the wheel now this is the section with all the climbing as we climb up towards Loft House quite a surprise after so much flat and rolling country wow
and then up there half right quick stop for changing the GoPro battery topping up the uh, the bottle in the cage etc 27 miles ridden so probably anything between 9 10 miles to go from here I thought I might mention at this point as well the bike that I'm riding let's have a look you've probably seen at the beginning that it's the uh, it's the rock hopper it's a mountain bike it's 27.5 wheels uh, the difference being that I'm I'm running it more as a hybrid if you look I've got the uh, Schwalbe Marathon Plus tyres which are extremely robust uh, I'm not going to tempt fate and say they're puncture proof but they are extremely uh, robust they're not particularly supple not light they're not the comfiest tyre that you could uh, ride but yeah and I mean they've, they've coped with they've coped with some fairly thick clay mud I felt my wheel just slipping in one or two places and I mean you can see that it's been a because we've had such a wet autumn and winter the trails seem seem wetter and slippery more slippery than than they normally would at this time of year I would think I would think that you could do this on a hybrid if you've got some knobbly tires uh, a gravel bike with again some at least a bit of grip on the tires and yeah maybe in a month if it finally dries out uh, it could get quite quick in places on on these types of tires or pimply gravel tires I think at winter though it would it would reward a, a full mountain bike knobbly tires and all the issue uh, because I can only imagine how sloppy some of this area must have been uh, a couple of months ago God. There's a series of sapping hills in the uh, Kirkham Gate area. We're going under this trunk road. Yeah. Plodge. And then there will be a climb soon on a bridleway, which I think is called Gorfort Lane. Yep. Just uh, being a little bit careful with the Marathon Plus. They're not mountain bike tyres, but they are robust. It's just occasionally you hit some very deep mud and it just throws you. Still climbing.
up to go up. Made it into Gothorp, Maple. Quite a sight. Now this section from Gothorp, Osset, Albury is not nice. It's a bit of a rabbit warren, and also the roads are a bit chaotic and it's something where very difficult to judge you miss the blue signs or whatever there's an awkward part coming up you've got to get a right turn uphill here And this now goes into a little park come golf course. is a bit so this is the center of Albury got to be a bit careful there's some turns coming short order right turn arm out yep I'm inside the last mile now maybe even uh, closer to the finish than that but it's the sort of riding where you've got to have eyes in the back of your head right So now, if we just scoot through here, we see a sign that says Slazinger Sports Centre. If you have a keen memory, that's where it all began. The Wakefield Wheel. Circuit closed. We're getting to the signing off point. The Wakefield Wheel was just about 36 miles. This ride is heading for 61 miles. And I think it's been a splendid day out. I really like the Wakefield wheel as a concept. If you like, it's a sort of a big brother to the Sub 2 series. Being inventive and, and getting the most out of a, a small and fairly built up area. Certainly that's, that's how the wheel feels. What I'll do, see what this edits down to. It's going to be a long one, I think. I'll say bye for now. See you back out on the Yorkshire roads very, very soon. Bye-bye.